given the fact that I am a developmental biology and a reproductive biology, you know, by, uh, by training, uh, I really believe that there is a lot about the, the, the biology of development, the biology of embryonic development and germ cells development that can be utilized for the purpose of actually combat uh, aging. Although there are many hallmarks of aging that have been, uh, you know, described, uh, I personally believe that uh, the, the epigenetic aspect of aging is uh, really kind of the, fun, the fundamental linchpin of the, of the problem. And, and I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, the epigenetic uh, changes are the cause or the consequence of aging. You know, they could be both. But fundamentally speaking, you know, if you take into account what happens in the cells, you know, cell autonomously, but also non-cell autonomously, these, all these uh, different phenomena or these different triggers at the end of the day affect the epigenome. At the end of the day affect the way cells behave, what genes they express, what they don't express. And that is again, fundamentally driven and controlled by the epigenome. And we, we know of course that with age, so if we go from young to old cells, you know, that epigenetic information dramatically changes at all levels. Okay. What I really care about is that if it is true and it is true that the epigenetic information changes with age. Uh, and that aging is fundamentally kind of the linchpin of a number of, of, dis of diseases, if we can tackle uh, or if we can somehow reset the epigenetic information, potentially we could actually really uh, intervene at the root of the aging process. And with that, we could potentially, you know, tackle uh, simultaneously all of these, all of these indications. Okay. So big picture but i think i think there is def definitely reasons to believe that, that this could put this potentially is possible <clears throat> so how well let's go back quickly uh to and again i put my developmental biology kind of you know lenses on and we know uh, that the epigenetic information is uh, malleable uh, is is a uh, is tunable is programmable right why well we know this from the fact uh, that during development this epigenetic the information changes and it can be completely reset to almost uh, kind of a, a stage zero or an age zero uh, type of epigenetic information. Uh, it's not a crazy idea because actually, if you think about the facts, if you think about, for, for example, somatic cell nuclear transfer experiments, uh, you're pretty familiar with the, you know, the Dolly the sheep, Cumulina the mouse, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, that experiment basically shows that if you take uh, uh, a somatic nucleus, from any differentiated cell of any age, you take that nucleus and you put it in the cytoplasm of an egg, uh, the egg has all the information to reset that program back to an embryonic-like cell uh, to the point that now you can make a cloned animal, you know, uh, a, a, full, uh, you know a fully living organism out of, out of that process. And guess what? The lifespan of that individual, of that clone animal uh, is, for the most part, normal. So that means that whatever epigenetic information, meaning age-related epigenetic information was accumulated in that original somatic cell, that, in, that information can be reset completely to zero to the point now that now the new organism has a normal lifespan. And in principle, you can, you can keep doing this, you know, and in, 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 some, in some way think about, you know, uh, immortality from uh, again, from a, from a cellular and epigenetic standpoint. Now, we also know that the same process, uh, you know, in a, in a way simplified, but also, you know, uh, similarly dramatically effective is the, the process of reprogramming to iPSCs that was, that was pioneered by, by Shinya Yamanaka. We know that we can take an old cell, somatic, fully differentiated, and we can make uh, an iPS, so an embryonic-like cell, which is fully reprogrammed and which is youthful by all means. Now, if we take that cell and we, and we differentiated it, for example, in the same original cell type, we get, we get the original cell type, but the, the cell the, this cell now is, is young by all means. So, and this has been shown, you know, again, in a variety of different, uh, different ways. Uh, so the embryonic cells or the embryonic-like cells, uh, the iPSCs and the progeny of those cells are youthful by all means. They have longer telomeres, they have, you know, uh, in enhanced mitochondrial functionality, uh, from the epigenetic standpoint, they, they, they are younger, 
uh, they, they can cope with the DNA damage much, much better as youthful cells. Uh, of course, you know, this approach is scalable, you know, in principle, for the same reason why you can make iPSCs from any cell type, I think that you can make younger cell type from any cell type, uh, starting cell type, as long as you know how you control that duration, how you control that reprogramming window, again, in time and in duration.